Let's talk buttonholes for the Bernina 330. We're going to use stitch number zero or 10 as it's noted. And first thing you're going to do is take out your bobbin case. You're going to notice you have a finger um, and there's a hole in it. We're going to find that if we take our thread and thread it through the finger, it is going to give us a little bit more tension and pull the threads down to the back side. So as you thread it through, you kind of have to go up and at an angle there, and then just put the bobbin case back in the machine like this. This is gonna make that satin stitch really nice and even on the top side. I also do this when I do decorative stitches, and anytime I'm using maybe a bobbin thread that's white or cream or neutral, and switching around to a lot of decorative threads. Thread the finger, the bobbin case makes it a lot easier. Now, all you have to do is just put it in like normal, and uh, don't forget to take that out when you're done, because sewing with a straight stitch is actually, um, well, it's not even when you are uh, having that threaded down there. So, we're gonna take a button, and we're gonna measure it and see what kind, what size we need to do this for. So, when you look at your button, you can go ahead, if you measure it ahead of time, you can kind of see where this is. This has got, uh, let's see, about 17 millimeters long. And then we do need to add one, uh, two millimeters, one from e for each side to accommodate the height of the button, button. And so then you're gonna come over here. We can set this up for 17 plus two, 19. You're gonna notice this part moves along the buttonhole foot. This is your 3A foot. By setting this down to the marked area, and they're, they're marked with the millimeters, you can ex get exactly the first buttonhole to run Perfectly. Now here's another thing. This does not have a little groove to slide the thread through. So if you're like me, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just slip this up and down and now my foot is underneath. Notice that I did have to take off the entire ankle for the machine. And why am I not doing this right? There we go. I'm at a little odd angle when I'm working here. So for buttonholes, all we need is a starting point. Now of course this is gonna be the very first one I'm doing. So I'm gonna to wanna to definitely check and make sure the size is proper before I actually go to my project. But all you need to do is set the needle right over your starting point. So for the first one, the machine does not know how long you want this buttonhole to be. So the only thing you need to do is start to stitch. So it's gonna start off with some locking stitches and start sewing down the left leg of the buttonhole. Now, there's a red mark right here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more. There we go. There's a red mark that's matched up with the needle. So I'm sewing until the two red marks meet. So the one on the edge that I set at the right size, plus the one that's moving, here they come, and stop sewing. To make that machine know that that's the length you want, you're gonna touch your reverse button one time, just a little fish hook up here, up at the top of your machine. And then here we go, we'll go out a little bit. That's all you need. That is all we need to set it. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna stitch backwards, Stitch the tack at the top of the buttonhole. Everything's preset, so all you have to do is put your hands in your lap and watch it stitch out. So here comes the right leg all the way down and the tack at the bottom. Now just keep sewing until it stops. It's got a few extra locking stitches at the end. Now it is stopped. My foot is technically still on the foot control and now we can lift it up. The foot is gonna reset. See how it pops back to the beginning? So it's not really a good idea to lift that foot up in the middle of a buttonhole uh, because it is, a, is going to set it um, back to the beginning. Look how pretty it is. With those uh, locked stitches right at the beginning and end, you can just come right in here and then cut that off. We have a Bernina buttonhole cutter that's available. You can just first moisten this with a little spray check let it dry for about five minutes, and the cutter is like a chisel, straight line chisel with a block of wood, and you just slice down, you just push down, cuts the buttonholes open immediately. I love that because every time it's always perfect. And then just trim that off to the back side. So if that is the right buttonhole length, all you'd need to do, once again, have your mark for your starting point for every buttonhole. Now, the machine is gonna say auto on the screen. That means all you have to do, put your hands in your lap and stitch. So you can stitch out hundreds of these <laughs> if you needed to, and they'd all be the exact same length. No problem whatsoever. I love doing buttonholes, especially when people realize how easy they are. It's no problem at all. Now, if that was not the right length when you tested it out. All you need to do is push clear 
the clear button, and then you will be restarting for your new size. So if I needed maybe one that was smaller, I can just go ahead and kind of move my uh, red line here, move it up here, touch the, let the two match up, touch the reverse button one time, and now I have my new smaller size. Now this is the new memorized size, and I could continue on with that uh, size of buttonhole on my projects. Try out a buttonhole, and you really notice how easy it is. Let's test out a corded buttonhole. So take some cording and fold it in half so you have a loop to hold on to. You look at the back of your buttonhole foot, there's a little peg sticking straight up. Loop it around that peg, draw it underneath, and right up the front of the toes. There is a little slot for each cord, one on the right and one on the left. Did you see how I kind of lifted it over the edge here and see how the cord is perfectly spaced for the buttonhole to stitch over? Then just go ahead and do the buttonhole just like you did before. Flip this up, have your starting place and start to sew. If your thread is up top above your foot, just go ahead and hold on to it until you take a few stitches and then you can stop and cut it off there. So a corded buttonhole is perfect for when you have something that is of a stretchy fabric or really heavy fabrics, maybe like on a coat, a wool coat would be a great place for this to go. Let's go ahead and set this out, touch the reverse button one time and it'll finish out the other side. You don't even have to think about where that cord is. It's just gonna be held in place for you because of the way the foot positions it. Lift it up, take the cord out of its front little toes. Then, see this cord up here that's looped? Just take a hold of one of the lower ones and pull until that loop completely disappears. Just enough. Now that is very solid, it's very stable. I'm gonna first cut this little thread away and then clip away the cord. You can just clip them and then they get a little pull, they disappear and you will never know, but boy, it really makes it look very sharp.